All right, buddy, you can roll anytime. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Anders Gymnasium at Ducoin High School as the Carterville Lions prepare for River to River Conference action tonight against Ducoin Scott Hudson. And uh, we talk about it all, all the time, but it's just the nature of, of conference play. Tough place to play, expect a physical game, and uh, one that more than likely will come down to the wire. We saw a physical game between these two teams earlier in the season. Uh, things almost got out of hand, but cooler, cooler heads prevailed. But both these teams struggling a little bit right now. Ducoin is two and six in their last eight. Carnival's lost three of the last four. Both teams looking to get back on track. These two teams met back on December 13th at Carterville, and the Lions came away with the 54-45 win. Um, that was just the second game after the Pyramid Bus Plus tournament. But uh, Carterville um, uh, coming off the uh, Superman Classic at Massac County a week ago where they finished fourth exactly as they were seeded, went one and two in the tournament. The last game, a 62-53 loss to Goreville. Goreville, the number two team in Class 1A. They were coming off their first defeat of the season. So you knew the odds were probably stacked against the Lions, but they fought hard in that game and, and could, didn't let a blowout game happen. And, I mean, they wound up losing by um, nine, but it could have been worse. Well, it could have been worse, but also... On the flip side of that, against Massac County, Carterville trailed by nine and a half, only trailed by one going into the fourth quarter. Carterville had all the momentum. And then two consecutive turnovers led to easy points for Massac County. They kind of ran away. Fast forward the next night to the Goreville game. Carterville down uh, in the second half. They cut the lead to one. They uh, eventually cut another lead, Goreville lead back to five. But Carterville just could not find a way to sustain those drives, those comebacks, to get them wins. Both teams are on the floor going through their uh, pregame workouts, and uh, the JV team just uh, uh, for Carterville was beaten by DuCoin's JV team 49 to 43. We're going to go on and continue on our SIH pregame report. We had a chance to talk to Coach Shane Hawkins just moments ago, and we'll have that for you coming up next. This is Carterville Lions basketball on News Radio WJPF. It's, it's just like, uh, it must be something with that hot spot because it's just like when the Lucy drops out. So there's, it's, it's that hot spot we use, so.
Yeah, I'll talk to him about it. Bring it back to us after this.
There you have it, Coach Shane Hawkins joining us here on our SIH pregame show. I'll ask you the same question I asked Coach uh, Shane Hawkins. What do you want to see out of these Lions as we come into the final nine games of the se regular season? Well, I think I want to see more consistency on both ends of the floor. You know, you, you heard Coach Hawkins talk about uh, being a game of runs, and I think that's been the, the key with Carterville. You know, they'll put a run together and get back in the game where they trail, but they can't finish the deal. So they've got to play more consistently. They've got to continue to play good defense. But when you get the opportunities to turn turnovers into points, I think it's very, very important that you do that. Carnival, this team, is better than the record. And I know, you know, they, the old saying, what, you know, you are what your record says you are. But this Carnival team is better than what they're showing. And if they can, can, if they can start playing consistently on both ends of the floor, and remember this, February 13th is when the regional seedings come out. So it's very important now to start winning some games to get a higher seed. We're going to have all the action for you coming up in just a few minutes. This is your SIH pregame show as the Carterville Lions prepare to take on the DuCoin Indians in River to River Conference action here on News Radio WJPO. Yep. Does the video look okay? Yeah, we can't even see the clock on the in front of us. We have to turn around to look at the clock behind us now. They took down the big scoreboard over the uh, center court. It's not here anymore. Anders Gymnasium at Duquoin High School. Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson. Our SIH pregame show continues. These two teams, they met back on uh, December 13th, the very first conference game of the season, Scott. And Carterville came, with a, came away with a nine-point lead. And that was really um, uh, probably one of the better games that the Lions played because... They got thumped in that uh, Pyramid Plus tournament to start the season. Yeah, start to finish, it was a pretty good game by the Lions. They probably, after the game, they probably felt more like they just played a football game than a basketball game because the physical play. But you look at this Duke coin team, as I said, they're only two and six in their last day. But their guards are 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and 5'11". Not very big, but they are very, very quick. And we've seen at times this year, I'll go back to the Sparta game, where Carterville's guards defensively had trouble with uh, with Sparta's guards who were very quick, good with the dribble drive. So I think that's the key to this game is to keep Ducoin's guards out on the perimeter. Physically, when you match this up on paper, this is a good matchup. The guards are the same size as Carterville's guards. Inside guys are about the same size as, as Carterville. Actually, Carterville may have just a little bit of an advantage height-wise in this game that they don't normally see. Especially in the starting lineup, Purcell uh, for DuCoin. He's 6'4", he's a senior, and he's a thick kid. I mean, he's a very good football player, and he likes to battle inside, and he'll be battling the likes of Sumner and Garby here tonight. So it'll be interesting to see if and when they bring in their big sophomore, Maurice uh, Washington, at 6'7". But at least at the start of the game, Carnival's going to have a size advantage on the inside. Let's see if they can take advantage of in it. In the first matchup, Braden Purcell was a beast for Coach uh, Jason James. He wound up being the leading scorer in the game. He had 19 points. He's tough to stop. On the, the outside, they had Caden Mays that added 13. They did not shoot the ball very well from the outside in that game. They, they 
I, I, I'm assuming that still having problems shooting the ball from the outside. But another thing that's changed since that first game is the shooting of Connor Hawkins from the outside. Connor Hawkins was really probably wasn't even a factor in that game, but now he's got his confidence. That's something that's going to give Duke coin problems tonight. Well, in that first game, um, even though Carterville won by nine and they put 54 points on the board, it was Eli Downen that was the leading scorer for the Lions. And, or excuse me, Bryce Anderson was the leading scorer, and he had nine points. So the, the scoring was spread out that night against Ducoin. Uh, as uh, we are getting set here at Carterville, um, Anders Gymnasium, always in the remodeled. I, I love how they remodeled this. We have a great look um, from our, our perch here on the end line. Nice crowd is filed in here tonight, and uh, we are getting set for River to River Conference action in the Mississippi. Carterville comes in two and three in conference, and uh, DuCoin comes into the game one and five in conference. And um, should be an entertaining ball game. We're going to go on and take our final break here on our SIH pregame show. When we return, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip. The Carterville Lions take on the DuCoin Indians. It's next on News Radio WJPF. Carterville Lions basketball here on News Radio WJPF. Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson as we are getting set for tip off. The starting lineup being announced right now for the Carterville Lions, the visitors in this game. Carterville will be in their road blues. And they've got a, so I, I, he may have scored his thousand points, I believe. Braden Purcell from uh, Duquoin being honored here at um, Duquoin High School here before the starting lineups are announced. And usually when they bring you a basketball, it's thousand point club. Yeah, he's played, uh, he, he's a very good athlete here at, at uh, Duquoin. Of course, one of the big uh, reasons why Duquoin has had success in football the last two or three years. Very good physical player basketball, in basketball. So congratulations to him. Great size, great athlete. Of uh, the Purcell family uh, uh, in, in DuCoin sports, there's been generations of Purcells that played for the Indians and, and a very athletic family. And congratulations to Braden Purcell um, of the DuCoin Indians. Now the starting lineup for Coach Shane Hawkins in the Carterville Lions. He's going to go with uh, the 5'8 uh, senior. It's going to be Carson Pearson. And, and I got to tell you, Carson Pearson was outstanding in that Goreville game, Scott Hudson, as he shut down. Um, uh, let's see here. It was um, looking back, Wiesel, maybe, for, I'll have to look. He, he, I'll look back in my notes and figure it out. But he's he's been a shutdown defender for Shane Hawkins. He usually gets the other team's best uh, guard, and he does a very good job. He's a very unselfish player. He doesn't look to shoot a lot, but he's very good at what he does, and that's playing defense, 
a good ball distributor, and he normally gets the assignment, like I said, of guarding the other team's best to guard. Coach Shane Hawkins also going with Austin Garby, the uh, 6'1 senior. He's going to go with the uh, six, five, eight junior Bryce Anderson, of course, the 6'4 junior Eli Downing. And uh, let's see here, Nick Laird. Is that the other one? No, he's got Anderson, Pearson, and Garby, Connor Hawkins. Down and Connor Hawkins. Connor yeah. Hawkins. There we go. Now the starting lineup for the Ducoin Indians and head coach Jason James. The Indians eight and thirteen on the season. They are one and five. Going to start the five-seven guard Dasani Jr. Excuse me, Dasani Edward. Then you have also Wade Robertson, the six-one forward. Then, of course, the you, uh, before mentioned Braden Purcell, the 6'4 senior. At one of the guards, it will be Jacob Green, the 5'11 guard, and the fifth starter for Coach Jason James will be Caden Mays. So it will be Mays, Edward, Purcell, Green, Robertson for the Cardinal Lions. It will be Pearson, Anderson, Downen, Kate, Connor Hawkins, and... Um, Carson Pearson. So both teams have been introduced. The officials are ready to go. And we are glad to have you. And thank you for tuning in to Carterville Lions basketball here on News Radio WJPF. Carterville will be back in action tomorrow night. They hit the road, Scott Hudson, to take on the Benton Rangers. A, a very good Benton team that, as I understand, got their best player back for tonight's game at Heron. Uh, but they're always good, but they're always very good. Up in Benton. Yes, they are. So, Both teams have received their final words from their head coaches. Jason James, the head coach of DuCoin. Shane Hawkins, the head coach of the Carterville Lions. Ball is in the air, and Carterville wins the tip to start things off. Carterville moving right to left on your radio dial. In the road blues here this evening is Carson Pearson on the right wing. Gets it top of the key to... Bryce Anderson and Connor Hawkins for three. His shot off the iron, no good, but Carterville Pearson gets the board and he just throws the ball up top. Carterville can reset as we're just underway here at Andrews Gymnasium in Duquine. Austin Garmy down on the low on the baseline, kicks it up top. Carson Pearson on the right wing, now to Bryce Anderson. Over to the left side, Connor Hawkins there, back to Anderson, top of the key, kick out pass right side. Pearson's gonna fire. And it's up, takes a high hop off the rim, and is good. A three-pointer for Carson Pearson. Carterville leads it 3-0. He normally will pass up that shot, but he took it there, and I thought it was going to be a miss, but it went straight straight in off the rim. Duquoin has the ball, left-hand layup on a cutting. Wade Robertson is good. 3-2, Lions with the one-point lead. Into the front court. Down low, they get it to Garby. His pass was picked off as he tried throwing it along, but the Ducoin throws it right back the other way. One turnover each uh, on these two teams. Carterville's ball, 6.43 on the first quarter clock. Pass into the paint to Garby, kicks it up top to Anderson, who launches for three and buries it top of the key. Back-to-back -back threes for the Lions. They lead it 6-2. little surprise to see Ducoin start out on his own defense. That's where, that's where you can take advantage with outside shooting, and Pearson and Anderson have hit threes to start this game. And the defense forces a turnover on the Ducoin Indians. It's going to give the ball right back to the Lions as they have the four-point lead. Bryce Anderson across the logo at midcourt. Left-right dribble, floats to the right side. Zone defense by the Indians. Carterville has it. Anderson from the elbow, puts it up off the glass. No good. Big rebound for the Indians. They bring it out the other way. Into the front court. Spin move. Nice. Up off the glass. Shot too strong as it was Caden Mays. It made a nice move into the paint. Just couldn't convert it. But the Indians get the ball back. Up top of the key to Sonny Edward. Now to the right wing to Jacob Green. Shot from the top of the circle is good. Wade Robertson, just a two-pointer. He's got all four of the Indians' points. Six to four ball game. 540 remaining here in the opening quarter. Lions ball. Garvey has it in the paint. Kicks right side. Carterville showing good ball movement. Connor Hawkins fakes the head. The three-point shot and traveled with the ball as he drug his foot. Two turnovers each 
on the Lions and the Indians. Hard to, hard to dribble through a zone defense. That's what Connor Hawkins tried to do. And the turnover gives the ball back to Duke Coyne, who trails by two. 5.25 remaining. We'll just give you a heads up. We have the uh, scoreboard right behind us, and the buzzer will be loud when you hear it. Eli down and takes the ball the other way after the turnover. Hits his first field goal of the game. Carterville's doubled him up. It's 8-4. Probably a, a little too, uh, too quick of a shot, but if it goes in, coach doesn't care. Outstanding <laughs> shot, Eli down and That's what he'll say. Indians have it. Into the front court. Dasani Edwards shot off the iron. No good. Too strong, and Bryce Anderson gets the board. Behind the back dribble at midcourt. Pass is just thrown away as he was expecting Connor Hawkins to cut outside. Bryce Anderson and Connor Hawkins have a conversation. And well, I will say this. Even if Connor Hawkins does cut outside, that ball's over Connor Hawkins' head. It was way out of bounds. I agree. Indians basketball. Robertson, no look pass down into the paint. Purcell converts. Nice pass from Caden Mays who gets the assist. And Purcell's going to go to the line and shoot the end one. Yeah, Cade Mays, he's only five foot six, listed at five six. Somehow he got down the baseline, found Purcell, and DuCoin can pull to within one with a free throw. Caden Mays a senior, Dasani Edwards a senior, Braden Purcell a senior, Jacob Green a senior. Four of the five. As Purcell misses the field goal, we have timeout, an official timeout on the floor. I think they got something we going. We will, as there's, yeah, there's a problem with the floor. We'll go on and take a 30 second break. We'll be back here on News Radio WJPF. Play another one. up on aisle four Scott Hudson that's what that was <laughs> exactly there was something on the floor at midcourt and the officials took the timeout back underway though Lions have the ball they have an 8-6 lead on the Indians Connor Hawkins to Bryce Anderson takes it to the top of the key left side back to Hawkins back to Anderson steps inside the arc kicks the right side Hart Pearson looks inside brings it back to the top Anderson Working the perimeter, Carterville's passing game looking good here tonight. Both teams have three turnovers here in the first quarter. Pearson steps inside to arc his pass, though, for uh, Austin Garby. Not within Garby's reach. Another turnover on the Lions. Yeah, it's between Austin Garby and Eli Down, and either one could get to it. Four turnovers now for Carterville. Did a very good job running the offense, being patient. But turnovers will kill you. The last two possessions for the Lions resulted in bad pass turnovers, though. Indians have it. Nice pass. Down low. Banked off the glass. Trajan Smith gets the bucket. And we're tied at 8 at 340 remaining in the first. Now we just saw a little bit of what quickness and speed can do to you. Lions basketball. Anderson between the circles. Now to Connor Hawkins who steps into a three-pointer. Hits it from the left wing. And Carterville's up at 11-8. Three of Carterville's four field goals have been threes. Connor Hawkins just picked up his first of the game. Kick to the right baseline. Braden Purcell turns it over. Four turnovers now on the Indians. Lions a chance to extend the lead to Hawkins. Three-pointer from the left wing. Good. Back-to-back -back threes for Connor Hawkins. That's going to force Duke Coyne to come out of that zone defense because he's a zone buster. He has the, He loves that left wing. And he's hit back-to-back -back 
trays for the Carterville Lions. They're up 14 to 8, 250 remaining in the first. Purcell, pass inside uh, down low, was out of the reach of Wade Robertson. That's turn five turnovers now on the Indians. Yeah, Carterville so far is doing a good job of taking advantage of those Zucoin turnovers. Some substitutions. Sumner and Caden Hawkins in the game for Carterville as Pearson and Garby come out. Lions broadcast brought to you by SIH, a comprehensive network of care. Visit online at SIH.net. Lions lead it 14-8, 235 remaining in the opening quarter. Anderson gets bumped from behind, gets the ball to Caden Hawkins. He stepped on the sideline, the far sideline, and these teams are even up at five turnovers each. Unforced error by Carterville. Two players, Anderson and Caden Hawkins, just too close together, and Hawkins got bumped out of bounds. Caden Mays breaks the timeline, brings it near side. Jason Whitfield into the game for the Indians. Top of the key, Caden Mays open for three, hits it. His first bucket of the game, and Carter Bills up three, 14-11. Lines quickly the other way. Caden Hawkins hits from about 10 feet. His first field goal, and it's a five-point lead for the Lions. Carterville gets the double team up top. Indians break it. Purcell has it. Right baseline. Now they work the perimeter. Caden Mays, right-hand dribble, brings it, crosses over, takes it in the paint. One step, two step, right-hand layup, good. They've hit their last four shots in the field, just like Carterville. This thing's turning into a track meet. Pace is really picked up here in the last two minutes. 16, 13, 135 remaining. Downins turnaround jumper in the paint. Nothing but the bottom of the net. <laughs> The shooting percentages are out of this world right now for both teams. This is your calculator? Will, yeah. will you be able to figure I that did. out? I <laughs> did. I'll, I'll take both my shoes off if I have to. Trajan Smith gets hammered in the paint as he took it to the rack. Carterville just picked up. This is only the first foul of the game, actually the second foul on the Carterville Lions, and it was called on Preston Sumner. Sumner and Purcell will have some battles as long as those two are in the game at the same time. Trajan Smith, the 5'10 uh, sophomore guard, hits the first field goal. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating in downtown Carterville for over 30 years. Doesn't matter if it's heating or cooling issues, they can help. Call 985-2502. Trajan Smith's free throw was good. He has four. It's 18-15. Lions with the three-point lead in the ball. Right wing, Connor Hawkins is going to launch from the right side. Bang for Connor Hawkins. Three threes in a row. And Carterville is up six. And, and Ducoin had just switched to a man-to-man. -man. Carter says, I don't care. I'll hit a three anyway. It doesn't matter. Leave me open. I'll, I'll take the shot. Under a minute to play, 55 seconds. Lions with the six-point lead. Purcell's jumper is good from the left elbow. That's his second field goal. He has four. It's 21-17 Lions. There's a lot of points being scored here comparatively for these Lions. Long three from Bryce Anderson. In, out, no good, out of bounds. And they're going to keep it with the Carterville Lions. Not used to seeing 21 points scored by this Lions team in the first. No, not used to seeing four, excuse me, five threes already for Carterville. In this first half, early in the season, you were lucky if you get five for a game. Carterville's basketball. Pass comes into Downing. Downing takes it to the baseline. Gets, puts the shot up, and they say he was fouled before the shot. And it's going to give the ball, keep the ball right there with the Lions on the far baseline. 27 and a half seconds on the clock. River to River conference action here at Anders Gymnasium. Dave McKenzie, Scott Hudson, down and has it. Now to Bryce Anderson, who's going to come up top. He'll set the offense. Man-to-man -man now defensively for the Indians. On the right side, 15 seconds. Anderson holds. Carterville will hold for the final shot. Eli Downen comes up, sets the pick for Anderson, takes it to the left side, takes it into the paint, has the ball stripped. He's fouled. And let's see if they're going to call that on the floor or a shooting foul because it could go either way. They're going to give him two shots. The foul is on Jason Whitfield. That's the second team foul on the Indians, and Bryce Anderson's at the line for the Lions. First free throw. 
Rims out, 6.3 seconds left. Nick Laird checks in for the first time. Cade Lustenberger checks in as well, replacing Eli Downing and Connor Hawkins. Bryce Anderson, the senior, second free throw is good. Excuse me, Bryce, a junior. Indians have it. Oh, stripped. And at the buzzer, nice job defensively by Caden Hawkins. And as we end the first quarter, Carterville, they lead the Duquoin Indians 22-17. Second quarter action is next on News Radio WJPF. Okay. Twenty-two seventeen as we head to the second quarter. Talk about some hot shooting from two teams in a first quarter. 73% from the field for Carterville. 78% for DuCoin. The difference, Carterville has four more threes in that first quarter than DuCoin. Indians have the ball to start play here in the second. They trail by five, 22 to 17. Carnival's matched up man-to-man -man defensively. On the floor, it's Bryce Anderson, Caden Hawkins, Cade Lustenberger, Preston Sumner, and Nick Laird. Indians have it up top. They work it right side. Trajan Smith. Smith, head fakes over to the top. Inside the arch jumper from Robertson's no good. Lustenberger pulls down the board. Gets it out to... Connor Hawk, Caden Hawkins. 10 foot jumper from Nick. Things down 542 in the second quarter. 22 17 the score at the end of the first. Turnaround jumper, fade away from Purcell's no good. Carterville gets the board. Pearson takes it down, kicks it back around. Caden Hawkins from the free throw line, left wing to Laird. Laird drives the baseline, gets a lane, blanks it off the glass, and it's good. Good job by Laird to recognize the opening on the baseline and then kiss it off the glass. Carterville leads it by seven, 24-17. The shot put up off the glass and a foul is being called on the Carterville Lions. Now Coach Hawkins not happy. He thought it was a tie-up in the middle. I think it was, call is going to be on Caden Hawkins. But he thought it was a tie-up, should have been a jump ball, but not to be. Caden Hawkins, or Caden Mays rather, will shoot two free throws for the Indians. The 5'6 senior guard hits the first. He has six points. Austin Garby into the game. Replaces Cade Lustenberger, who saw some nice minutes here in the second quarter. And Coach Jason James is going to bring Jaden Smith into the game and Jacob Green. 5'10 remaining. Carterville leads it by six. Second free throw from Caden Mays is good. 24-19 now, a five-point lead. Caden Hawkins steps across midcourt. Man-to-man -man defense by Duquoin. Preston Sumner comes way out high, left of the circle. Gets it to Garby. Nice backdoor pass to Nick Laird. Gets the bucket and gets the foul. What an assist from Austin Garby. What a give and go. Garby got it turned immediately towards the basket, saw the cutting Laird, and gave him a beautiful bounce pass. Goes up off the glass and gets the foul. Jaden Smith, who just came back into the game for the Indians, picked up the foul. That's team foul number four on DuCoin. Nick Laird at the line for the N1, the free throw. Rims out, board by Garby. He gets it, puts it up, gets fouled. 
can't get the shot to fall, and he got hit from the left and the right side and is going to go to the line to shoot two free throws for the Lions. Yeah, Carnival needs to do a better job at the free throw line. They're one of five from the line so far, leaving a lot of points at the charity stride. Wade Robertson just picked up his second foul. 26-19, the free throw from Garby is too strong. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Home Renew. Serving all of Southern Illinois. Protect what matters most with Home Renew. Roofing, siding, storm damage, repairing gutters. Giving you peace of mind. Call 694-9100. Call Home Renew. Austin Garby's second free throw. No good. Rebound to the Indians. To Caden Mays. He keeps it. Brings it behind the back. Across the logo. Hands it off to Jaden Smith. Now on the right wing. Jacob Green. Back to Smith. Left hand dribble for Smith. To Mays. He has the ball tipped away from behind. A foul is called on Carson Pearson. Carterville's left a lot of points at the charity stripe. They have missed six, free, six straight free throws in this first half. Carterville, a very streaky free throw shooting team. Has been all season long. And at times... Unbelievable. Very, 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 very streaky offensively, too. Yeah. Well, Preston Sumner checks out. 26-19, Carterville on top. 4.30 remaining in this first half. With the basketball, Indians have it. Jason Whitfield now to right, right side to Caden Mays. Mays takes it down the lane, kicks it to left wing. Jacob Green walked. He walked. And a turnover. Oh, they're calling a foul? No, oh, they finally. Okay, no. They, they finally called. The official who blew the whistle never made a signal. And then eventually he did. Turnover. I have number eight. Connor Hawkins for three. <laughs> Bang. Man, he knows that's going in. That's four three-pointers for Connor Hawkins. Timeout is taken by Coach Jason James. And the Carterville Lions are up 10 at the 407 mark of the first half. This is Lions basketball on News Radio WJPF. 60. 60. He shoots like you. Connor shoots like you do. to say congratulations to Coach Matt Crane and the Lady Indians. They picked up a win last night, 51-45 to over Nashville, clinching at least a tie in the River-to-River uh, -River Conference. They have two more conference games, pick up one more win, and they win the conference, Scott Hudson. One loss on the season. To say they're rolling would be an understatement. Number four team in the state, and uh, they are on a roll. Carterville leads this game 29-19, up 10. Well, Indians with the ball. 3.45 remaining in the half. Pass down low off the glass. Purcell converts. Nice assist from Caden Mays. And it's an eight-point lead. That's Four. their first field goal the second quarter. So a foul is called on Carterville. Or excuse me, on DuCoin. It's going to be on... Jason Whitfield, who just picked up his second. That's the sixth team foul. And at the line will be the 6'4 junior, Eli Downen. Eli having a quiet night. He's got four points. First free throw is good. Well, Duke Coin play has played mainly zone in this first half. The reason why is because of Downen. They, want, they do not want to let him run wild in the paint. But while they've done a good job of that, they've allowed Caden Hawkins to go off. Down in second free throw is good. Six for the big guy. 
31-21, back to a 10-point lead, Indians basketball. In the front court, moving left to right on your dial to coin the home team in the home whites. Across the free throw line to the right wing, shot taken, three-pointer, no good. Down and gets the board, the shot taken by Jason Whitfield. Outlet pass, right wing, Connor Hawkins, stutter step, takes it to the baseline, pulls up the dribble, gets it to Downen. Down and skip pass right side, Carson Pearson. Now up top to Bryce Anderson, Shane Hawkins sets his offense for the Carterville Lions. 31-21, 255 remaining here in the first half. Downen gets an opening, takes it to Lane, off the glass, gets fouled. Eli will go to the line to shoot two free throws. Nice drive from the 6'4 junior. Well, he's got a mismatch every time he gets the ball. He's got somebody smaller than him guarding him. Although that player may be quicker than Eli, if he gets a step on you, you're going to get beat. Trajan Smith picks up his first foul. Downen's free throw is good. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Subway. Try the new Subway Fresh Value starting at just $1.89 each. They are freshly prepared right in front of you for a limited time at participating Subway stores. Number 24, second free throw is good. Four in a row for Eli Downen. From the stripe, 33-21. Biggest lead for the Lions. They lead by 12. Over in the right side, Indians basketball. Shake and bake, takes it to the paint. Nice job defensively shutting down Caden Mays. Eli Downen and Nick Laird there to make the stop. Ducoin takes and sets the offense once again. Right side. Jaden Smith has Bryce Anderson. Crossover, left wing, three-point shot off the iron. No good. That shot taken by Trajan Smith, and down and gets the board. Carterville takes it the other way. Bryce Anderson just inside the arc, fires. No good. Battle for the board comes off to the Indians. Quickly, Caden Mays, one man to beat, makes it past Bryce Anderson defensively. He banks it off the glass, and it's 33-23. Carterville quickly the other way. Down and Takes it to the low block, puts it up. He gets a bump foul and will go to the line once again. Can he hit six in a row? Now he's just, every time he gets the ball, if he sees an opening, he's going to take it. He's going to draw the contact. And he's doing a very, you know, he, had, he scored almost all of his points at the free throw line. But that's all right. As long as you get there and you make them. And you can see now he's starting to feel it. He yeah. knows when he gets the ball, that, that lane to the to the low block is there. And if he can't make the shot, he can get the foul as he's hit five in a row now from the stripe. Carterville up 11, minute 53 remaining here in the first half. Second one is good from down and six now in a row from Eli. Austin Garby comes to the sideline, gets a hand slap from the coaching staff and the players. Replacing him, Preston Sumner into the game. So on the floor, it's Anderson, Pearson, Nick Laird, Preston Sumner, and Eli Downing. Indians have it between the legs. Ball's tipped away, and it's controlled by Jaden Smith as it was tipped around, and a whistle and a foul is being called on the Carterville Lions. No, I think it's just out of bounds off of Bryce Anderson. Well, okay. They picked up a foul on Anderson. Well... Maybe they call. I, I could have swore they they do have Anderson up there. As Indians ball, he just takes it in, runs into, takes it as far as he can go till he runs into somebody. <laughs> <And> that's <laughs> Caden Mays. Yeah, Caden Mays only five six, but Carnival's doing a very good job of not letting Purcell dictate this game. That's where Ducoin wants the ball to go. But whether it's Sumner or Garby, they've done a very good job of making sure Purcell was not going to beat them. As we said in the pregame show, when these two teams met back in December, it was Braden Purcell to lead all scores. He had 19, a game-high 19 for Coach Jason James and the Duquoin Indians in that nine-point loss. 35-24, Carterville up 11. Caden May's second free throw is good. Coming up, we're going to have our Thad Elwood Plumbing Halftime Report. Lots of action around Southern Illinois. We'll update you on that. A backcourt violation as Eli Downing had just stepped across midcourt. Bryce Anderson was behind him. 
And he passed the ball to Anderson, and that's a turnover on Carterville. Unforced error. You have to know where you're at on the floor at all times. And to go into the front court and throw it in the back court, you can't do that. You can't do that. 10 point lead, 35 25. Caden Mays hands the ball to Smith. Carterville gets a hand on it, forces the turnover. Quickly, the Lions the other way. Nick Laird pulls up the dribble, needs some help. Gets it from Eli down, and as he hands it to him, down and into a double team, breaks the double team. His kickout pass comes up way up top, saved by Laird. Gets it to Connor Hawkins. Left wing, Eli Downen, his three pointer, an air ball, and he's going to hear from the DuCoin faithful on that as we have 45 seconds remaining. Purcell has it, right wing. Back up top, Caden Mays. Mays between the leg dribble, bumps in. That should have been a charge, not called. Ball, the shot bounces. <laughs> I thought it was going to fall off. He gets that one to fall. 13 for Caden Mays. 35-27, Carterville the ball and the lead. Caden Hawkins down low to Sumner. Can he get the foot in? Banks it up off the glass. No good. Here come the Indians. 19 seconds remaining in the half. Takes it to the rack, throws it to Purcell. He banks it off the glass. Shane Hawkins is upset. Eight for Purcell now, 35-29. It's a six-point lead. Carterville's not finished this first half strong. Three seconds, two. They got Anderson trapped. And a turnover as Bryce walked with the ball. Well, Bryce ran into Laird. I don't know if Laird was supposed to move out of the way, or Bryce should have maybe just pulled it back out. 1.7 seconds, the shot at the buzzer is off a little bit short. And that's how we end the first half. 35-29, boy, this is a high scoring affair. We haven't seen uh, Carterville score this many points in a while in the first half. 35-29, Lions lead it, coming up. It's our Fat Ellet Plumbing Halftime Report next on News Radio WJPF. Thirty-five twenty-nine. The score. We're at the half. It's our Thad Ellett halftime. Uh, Thad Ellett Plumbing halftime report here at Anders Gymnasium. Scott Hudson. Good ball game uh, for the first half of the game. Very entertaining ball game. Both teams shot better in the first quarter than they did the second. The Carnival sixty-one percent from the field in the first half. That includes six threes. Ducoin fifty-eight percent from the field. They had only one three in that first half. Carville only shot 54% from the free throw line, 86% from the charity stripe for DuCoin. Carterville and DuCoin both eight rebounds. Pearson, Downen both led Carterville with two rebounds each. Smith led DuCoin with three rebounds. Nine turnovers for DuCoin, eight for the Lions. When you look at the scoring for the DuCoin Indians, they were led by uh, Caden Mays, the 5 6 Senior guard, he's got 13 to lead all scores in the game. 
Braden Purcell has eight. Wade Robertson with four. Trajan Smith has four. And uh, let's see here. That wraps up just four players into the scorebook for the Duquoin Indians. Their 30, excuse me, their 29 first half points. For the Carterville Lions, they are led by Connor Hawkins. He has four three-pointers, 12 points to lead the Lions. With 10 is Eli Downen. You have Bryce Anderson with four, Nick Laird with four, and Carson Pearson with three. Connor Hawkins, though, keeping the Lions in that game with those four three-pointers. Yeah, Duke Coyne came out in the zone. I thought to myself, uh-oh, you might regret that, and uh, they did. I think he hit his last three when Duke Coyne went to man-to-man, -man, but all his damage was done, you know, against that zone defense. Very, you know, I would have said that was a very good first half for Carville with the exception of the last two and a half minutes of that second quarter. Carterville got sloppy. They had a 10-point, 11-point lead. Now it's down to six. Duke Coyne's back in this game because Carterville just went into one of those funks of where they turned the ball over and didn't do a very good job defending on the other end. 35-26, excuse me, 35-29 the score here at the half. Carterville on top. The Van Ellett Plumbing Halftime Report will continue next on News Radio WJPF. These are two years old. I know I need to go get new ones. Back on our Thad Ellett Plumbing Halftime Report. Uh, we're talking with uh, Athletic Director, Football Head Coach, Brett Dow. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. We're glad to have you. Boy, it's a busy weekend. There's so much going on in sports. The, uh, it, well, I, I want to talk first about Matt Crane and the Lady Lions last night. Won a, a, at least clinched a, a tie for another division title. Yeah, I'm really happy for our girls. They worked so hard. And uh, happy for Coach Crane with his... You know, three seniors that have been around through a lot of battles and some ups and downs. And, you know, they've had to go through some tests over the last few years. And this year it's kind of all coming together for them. You know, I think they're, what, 23-2 and two and clinched a, uh, at least to share the conference and can win it outright Tuesday night at Sparta. So, you know, looking forward to, to their postseason run. And I'm happy to, to have the opportunity to host their sectional in the, the middle of February. I was going to ask about sectionals. What do we know about the Lady Indians? Well, Lady Lions and in section. Yeah, I mean, really, I don't know a whole lot, you know, at this point, who we, who we would be looking at. Um, you know, just going to bring four teams there, the four regional winners, and you know, we'll do two semifinal games on February 18th. It's a Tuesday. And then we'll do the championship game on the 20th at 7 o'clock, and hopefully the Lions are playing in it and have an opportunity to win their first sectional title. They've never won a sectional before, so uh, they're going to have a great opportunity back in 2A this year, and they're going to... You know, somebody's got to beat us at our place uh, to get out of there. So, uh, looking forward looking forward to hosting that tournament. Also, a first for Carterville coming up tomorrow as you're going to be hosting the sectional IHSA cheer competition. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm pretty fired up about that. I mean, it, it's a big deal. We've got 43 teams coming in tomorrow. Um, go all the way up to Jacksonville and Danville and, you know, Lincoln. So, there, some of these teams are traveling a long way. And it's the farthest south, the cheerleading sectional is.
35-29 as we head toward the third quarter. Scott Hudson keys for the Lions. Well, I think they've got to do, they got to continue to play defense like they did for most of the first half. That is keep Ducoin's guards on the perimeter. Don't let them get inside and then kick the ball to wide open Purcell. Offensively, just keep doing what you've done. Take care of the ball a little bit better than you did the last two minutes. But if you keep shooting like you are, they'll leave here with a win. I had eight first half turnovers. That's correct. That's Nine for Ducoin. Good. That's what I thought. Underway here in the second half. Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson. Nice pass down low to Garvey. His pass is tipped away out of bounds. Off of Purcell is going to stay with the Lions. On the floor for Carterville. It is Austin Garby, Bryce Anderson, Eli Downing, Carson Pearson, and Connor Hawkins. It's the same starting five for Coach Shane Hawkins. Nice inbound pass to Austin Garby. He lays it home with a left-hand layup. And Carterville's up. 8, 37, 29. Good start for Carterville. And now the ball goes out of bounds. And Shane Hawkins is like, you're kidding me? Mays had the ball for DuCoin, and it just went off of him and out of bounds. And <laughs> Shane Hawkins just laughs, sits down, and says, okay. I don't know. But I wish we could read lips from here. I wish we could have a mic to myself, but I know that probably wouldn't be a good thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it looked like Shane Hawkins looked at Jason James and said, come on. That was off of you guys. Yeah. And Jason was like, what do you want me to do? Uh, is he the chemistry teacher here? <laughs> <laughs> Skip pass left wing for the Lions. Jacob Green launches from three. That's no good, but a putback. What a rebound from Dasani Edwards. His putback was no good, and he gets fouled. And a foul is called on I think it's Actually, a jump ball. Yeah, it was a jump ball. Indians keep it. Three-pointers good from Caden Mays. He's on fire. He has 16 points to lead all scores. 37-32, a five-point lead. Caden Mays keeping the Indians in it. Bryce Anderson launches a long three from the right wing. Gets that. Bucket back, 40-32, Lions up eight. Yeah, big basket to kind of stop this little mini run to coins on. Wade Robertson kicks it right side. Jacob Green wants to go inside, drives, takes it to the low block. His shot is blocked by Austin Garby. He gets the ball and gives it to Bryce Anderson. Carterville can go back to double-digit lead. Anderson's jumper inside the arc. Shot no good, rebound. Jacob Green. Takes it the other way, turnover on the Indians. Here's Carson Pearson, left-hand layup is good. Pearson has five. Carterville's back up 10, 42-32. Woo-wee, <laughs> Austin Garvey, a big block from behind, but a foul. Garvey with a windmill block from behind. On Dasani Edward, and D will go to the line to shoot two free throws. Well, that's one thing Ducoin can do. They can get into the front court very quickly, either after a miss or a made basket. Their quickness can really cause problems if you're not back on defense. Dasani Edward, the senior guard, yet to get into the scorebook tonight. Misses the first free throw. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Tony Gates State Farm with more, their, more drivers than any other company. Get to a better state with Tony Gates and State Farm Insurances. Dasani Edward hits his... First point of the game, 42-33, Lions lead it by nine. Pearson now to Eli Downen. Downen looks inside. Garby comes up top, take the ball, and gets it to Pearson. Nice pass uh, intended for Austin Garby, and the pass was too far in front, out of bounds, turns it over. Yeah, not a good pass by Pearson. It was a bounce pass on the baseline and just a little too far for Garby. And to quote Scott Hudson, Unforced turnover. Yep, unforced error. 42-33. Sonny Edwards, he buries one from the top of the key. His first field goal of the game, he has four. And it's a six-point lead for the Lions with the basketball. Anderson, shake and bake up top. Ooh, nice move. His pass tipped away. Another turnover on Carterville. The, uh, Jacob Green has the ball tipped away into the front court. Pass stripped. Carterville comes away with it. Each team turns the ball over. Here comes Eli Downen. Into the paint. Floater's no good. 
Jacob Green with the rebound, takes it the other way. Ball stripped from behind. Garby saves it, goes four rows deep into the crowd. And the ball will stay with the Duquoin Indians. Cardinal had a nine point lead. A couple of sloppy passes. And maybe a quick, maybe a quick shot by Down. I know he's feeling it a little bit. Got in the lane, threw up a little floater. But I think at that point, when you're up by six, you set up the offense, run some clock. Purcell banks one, his shot off the glass, no good, and down and has the rebound. 42-36, 450 remaining here in the third quarter. At the half, it was 35-29 Lions. Nick Laird, right hand floater is good for Nick Laird. What a drive. Good, strong move to the paint, and then got a little floater over the defender. Little finger roll floater. Green for the Indians. Now the three ball from the left wing is no good. Down and tracks down the basketball, picks up the board. Outlet pass, Carson Pearson. 12 foot jumper, no good. Ball comes off the rim long and the Lions control. Bryce Anderson's for three. He hits the floor, no call. And the rebound to Jacob Green. The 5'11 senior for Coach Jason James. Spin move off the glass. Caden Mays, his shot no good. Down and gets the rebound. Pearson to Downen. Now to Mort Laird, right wing. Dribbles around between the circles. Takes it to the free throw line. Short jumper is good from Nick Laird. He's feeling it now. He's hot. We have a timeout called by Shane Hawkins with 346 remaining here in the third. Carterville's up 10, 46-36 on News Radio WJPF. 30, please. 30. Updating a couple of games from around Southern Illinois. At the end of three, Centralia leading Altoff 29-25. At the half, Murfreesboro and Massac County are tied. At the half, Benton and Heron. Uh, Benton uh, leads the Tigers 24-19. I think it's pink out at Heron tonight. I believe. Oh, is that correct? I believe so. So, And the Marion Wildcats, their game was canceled this evening. They'll play, I think they said on Tuesday night. So... Here it's 46-36, Lions up 10. 3.35 remaining in the third quarter. Indians with the basketball. Pass is tipped away, turnover on the Indians. Here comes Nick Laird. Takes the baseline, drops it to Garby. Puts the ball, has it stripped out of his hands, turns it over the other way. Indians quickly, Jacob Green has the ball stripped, ball on the floor, and the Lions pick it up. Turnover on the Indians. Here Nick, Nick Laird, pass down low to Garby, can't control. Pearson from three is good. Carson Pearson, his second three-pointer. He has eight. Carterville's up 13. Carson Pearson says, let's stop the insanity. Indians with the ball. 2.55 remaining in the third. Pass to Purcell from the elbow. The shot is good. Ten points from Purcell and another timeout. It's a 30-second timeout taken by Ducoin at the 252 mark. Lions up 11 on News Radio WJPF. Fifty-two remaining here in the third quarter. Updating one other score. Boy, this would be an upset. Mount Vernon leading Carbondale 58-49 at the end of three. Yeah, Mount Vernon's quickly becoming a pretty good team. They got a mere, a mere span back. That, that always helps. That always helps. Preston Sumner has the ball. 
His shot no good, but Nick Laird is there to get the put back, and Laird is in double digits with 10. Carterville's up 51-38. Yeah, Laird's having a really good game tonight, especially offensively. He has six second-half points. Whistle and a foul on the far side is going to be called on Carterville. The foul is on the Lions. Preston Sumner, foul number two, a pushing foul. Indians have it. Short jumper, wild left-hand layup, no good. Lions come away with it. Here's Downen into the front court. They work around the right side. Bryce Anderson pops for three. Air ball, Sumner's there. His put back. He's fouled, and Preston Sumner will go to the line to shoot free throws. I think Sumner was probably the most surprised player on the floor. That ball just came right to him. Went back up, got fouled, going to try to get a couple of free throws down here. The foul is on Trajan Smith, his third of Ducoin. Sumner's free throw and air ball. Murfreesboro leads Massac at the end of the third, 28-23. That's a very low scoring game. Bryce Anderson checks out at the 208 mark here in the third. Carterville up 51-38. Preston Sumner at the stripe. His second free throw is good. That's his first point of the game. It is have it. Into the front court. Caden May. Mays loses the ball, goes out of bounds. Turnover on the Indians. And give Laird credit because he stuck his hand in there quickly. Knocked the ball away, and it went off of the New Coin Indian player out of bounds. Lions broadcast brought to you by the city of Carterville. Nick Laird's his short jumper is no good. Brought to you by the city of Carterville. Mel Brad Robinson and the entire city of Carterville. Sponsors and supporters of Lions Sports. Up and under with the bucket on the far end is Caden Mays. And the foul. 18 in the game for the senior, and he's going to the stripe to try to make it 19. Mays. Beat his guy on the baseline, and Carterville had nobody come over and stop him. Sumner was there. He was in position to step over and stop him, but he didn't. And Connor Hawkins fouled him from behind. Caden Mays trying to pick up point number 19, his free throw. No good. 135 remaining in the third. Carterville up 52-40, the 12-point lead. Connor Hawkins for three. Yes! And he hits the floor hard, but he, he gets fouled. up. Yeah, he's okay. So he's going to go to the free throw line for a potential four-point play. He has 15 points, and he gets the foul. Cade Lustenberger is going to come in to replace Eli Down, and the foul is called on Dasani Edward. That is the first on Ed. 40 seconds remaining. The ball tipped away. Turnover on the Lions to the rack. Right-hand layup. Dasani Edwards is good. 56, 45, and 11 point lead. Ducoin's picked up the defensive pressure, and a foul is going to be called on Wade Robertson as he got into the back of Cade Lustenberg. Berger. Yeah, Carterville caught a break there. Carterville, again, I go back to the end of the second quarter. Carterville didn't finish strong. Carterville not necessarily finishing strong here at the end of the third quarter. But still, they have an 11-point lead. It was 16. Just moments ago. 25.9 seconds on the clock. Down and will trigger timeout. As Dasani Edward. <laughs> We're going to have a cleanup on aisle five once again. Official timeout taken on the floor. We'll be back. In 60 seconds, this is Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. I would say he has the flu. Freaking kidding me. Go ninety. Go ninety.
Yes. Twenty seconds remaining in the third quarter. Carterville with the basketball, not 56-45 on an eleven-point lead. Carterville will hold for the final shot. Ten seconds. The ball's tipped out of bounds into the Carterville Lions bench. It's going to stay with Carterville. Yeah, Eli kind of telegraphed that pass to Connor Hawkins. Let's see with 9.6 seconds to go what Carterville can come up with. Austin Garby checks in, replacing Caden Lustenberger. Pass is tipped away out of bounds. Nice job by Caden Mays to get a hand on that one. 56-45, Carterville up 11. Their lead was as much as 16 points earlier. Hawkins for three. No good. His shot. Air ball. Outlet pass. Ends the quarter. 56-45. Carterville leads the Duquoin Indians. Stay tuned. Fourth quarter action is coming up next on News Radio WJPF. Fifty-six forty-five as we head to the fourth quarter here on News Radio WJPF. Not as hot shooting by these teams in the third quarters of the first half. Carterville forty-seven percent, Ducoin forty-three percent. Lions ball to start play, and the eleven-point lead into the front court. Downen to Bryce Anderson lost the handle, but gets it back. Gets it back to Downen. Down and has it stripped from behind. Turnover on the Lions. The other way, off the glass, shot no good. Ball out of bounds, off to coin. It's gonna, should be Carterville basketball. None of the officials can make a call yet. And they're gonna say it's Indians basketball. That should have been Carterville, so. 56-45, just underway here in the fourth. Into the front court with it. Right wing. Up top, it comes to Caden uh, to uh, Jaden Smith. Now left wing. Caden Mays takes it. Little right hand floater is good from Mays. He has 23 points in this game to lead all scores. And now it's a nine point game. Cut Caden Hawkins to Garby. Now left side. Connor Hawkins for three. Shot no good. Down in the rebound, put back is good for Eli Downen. He has a dozen and Carterville's back up 11. That was a big basket by Downen because if he doesn't get that offensive rebound and stick back, Ducoin's got a chance to come back down and pull within six. Ball over to the right side, taking it into the paint. Kicks it to Caden Mays. Why not getting the ball? He's got 23. His shot is no good and Connor Hawkins gets the board for the Lions. A chance to extend this 11-point lead. Bryce Anderson to Downen to Connor Hawkins. Back to Downen. Left of the circle. 58-47 to Connor Hawkins. To Downen. Carterville spreads the floor and Downen's no-look pass was tipped away. It's another turnover on Carterville. Crossover dribble. Floater is good. And a From foul. Jaden Smith, his first field goal, and he gets fouled. And Jaden Smith is going to be able to go to the line to try to cut this to an eight-point lead. 
What did we talk about in the pregame? Consistency. That's been something Carnival's had a problem with all year. And a free throw here. And Ducoin's back to within eight. Foul was on Bryce Anderson, his second. Updating one score, Benton leads. Heron, 36-35. The free throw was good. From Jaden Smith. Into the front court with the basketball. Carterville, an eight-point lead. They had a 16-point lead in the third. Caden Hawkins fights his way through the defense, gets it to Anderson. Now to Eli Downing. Carterville's trying to run the offense. They spread things out. Not quite a four-corner. Eli Downing way up top. Now to Anderson. Back to Downing. Now they get it to Carson Pearson. He takes it toward the baseline. DuCoin wants to get the trap, and he's fouled. A timeout actually is called by Shane Hawkins. It's 5.30 remaining in the game. Carterville up 58-50. A 30-second timeout on the floor here on News Radio WJPF. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating in downtown Carterville for over 30 years. Call 985-2502. Get back to comfort this season. Proudly supporting Lions sports. Carterville has the ball and the eight-point lead with 520 remaining in the game. Lions are 2-3 and three, trying to go to 500 in conference and to get their overall record back to 500 as well. If Carterville can ever get the ball to the middle, whether it be the top of the key or at the free throw line, with this trap out front, somebody's got to be open. you got you got a three-on-two, maybe even two-on-one advantage, but you've got to get the ball to the middle of the floor for that to happen. Pass comes to Bryce Anderson. Back to Downing. Back to Anderson. Map top to Caden Hawkins. Now they work around the perimeter. Connor has it. One dribble. Double team. Kicks it out top. Nice pass to Downen. Nice pass to Caden Hawkins. Skip pass long way. What a save by Connor Hawkins. He had to go high to get that. Gets a hand from his pop who helps him to his feet. And Carterville is trying to run as much clock as they can. Tip pass. Turnover. The other way. A foul is called a jump ball. I can't tell if Ducoin likes that or I know Carterville fans like that call. Yeah, so the alternating possession will stay with Ducoin, but Carterville having trouble with this half-court trap of Ducoin. Indians ball. They trail by eight. Three-pointer from Caden Mays, two candidate. Who will it be? Find out coming up on our post-game report. Ball was kicked. Yes, they're going to say that's a turnover on Carterville, number eight. Yeah, but who kicked it? It went off Bryce Anderson's foot. Oh, okay. I guess that's a turnover. Ball did not go out of bounds. So it gives it right back to the Indians. They try to cut into this 10-point lead. They've done a good job. It was 16. They've got it to 10, but haven't really been able to get it. 10, 8, 10 is about where the game has stayed. The ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to belong to the Indians. Yeah, Purcell's been frustrated here tonight. He hasn't had he hasn't had the looks. He hasn't had the number of shots that he's nor, that he normally sees in a game. But give Carnival credit; they've done a very good job of keeping the ball out of his hands for the most part. The first game this year, Purcell had 19. His shot is good. He now has 12. And it's an eight-point game. Downing in the backcourt. Carterville needs to get it in the front court. Anderson breaks the timeline. Nick Laird traveled with the basketball. Another unforced error on the Lions. And Carterville's 
Just not content holding the big lead. They already no. they get the ball right back. They don't like the prosperity. Indians. Still a lot of time in this game. 3.02. Austin Garby comes out. Connor Hawkins back into the game. Nick Laird's on the floor. Caden Hawkins on the floor. Bryce Anderson and Eli Downing. Indians have it far end here at Anders Gymnasium. A long three from Dasani Edward. No good. Connor Hawkins gets the rebound. Needs some help. Gets it to Downing. Downing. Bump from behind by Caden Mays. That's going to be foul number three on Mays. And it's good they called that foul on Mays because Downing air, air melted over Anderson's head right into the front row on the near sideline. 2.45 remaining. Bryce Anderson takes the inbound pass. Steps across midcourt. Dribbles around the top. Now right side to Caden Hawkins. To Downing. Ball rip. Takes it to the hole. Gets bumped from behind before the shot. They're going to pick uh, Braden Purcell to pick up his first foul of the game. And Carterville's basketball on the end line just below us. That was the sixth team foul. Next foul put Carterville on the one and one by the Indians. Up top, Caden Hawkins. If you want to foul somebody, foul him. Bryce Anderson's pass to Connor Hawkins. Dribbles around. He gets fouled by Caden Mays. And that's going to put the Lions in the bonus. And Connor Hawkins in the game who has one, two, three, four, five three-pointers. He has a chance to pick up point number 17. The senior, 6-3, free throw is good. He's got another one coming. Carterville three of four from the line this second half. Lions broadcast brought to you by Subway. Try the all new Subway fresh value starting at 189 each. They are freshly prepared right in front of you. For a limited time at participating stores. Connor Hawkins hits both free, both free throws. 18 in the game now for Connor. Carterville back to a 10-point lead. You never feel safe though until the final <laughs> buzzer. It's just, it's just. <clears throat> Indians with just over two minutes remaining and the basketball. Off balance shot, no good. Bryce Anderson gets the board. Outlet pass. Carson Pearson off the glass is good. Nice pass from Bryce Anderson. Nice conversion by Carson Pearson. Nice awareness by Anderson to look up the floor. And Whistled a foul <laughs> on Bryce Anderson. Anderson standing there. Mays does, does a little spin move into him. And Anderson's like, what'd I do? I was just standing there. I was yeah, an innocent I bystander. I was, it was a drive-by, seriously. It was a drive-by, that's about right. <laughs> Indians basketball, minute 45. Carterville up 12. Caden Mays, uh, layup is good, gets the foul. Caden Hawkins reached in and slapped him as he went by. And Mays, who has 25 and can cut this lead down to single digits. Connor Hawkins comes in. Nick Laird will go out for the Carterville Lions. Don't forget, Carterville will be on the road tomorrow night, non-conference game against the Benton Rangers. May's free throw knows good, is no good, and Little Hawk with the board. Eli down and into the front court. They get it to Connor Hawkins. He dribbles out, has the ball kicked away, gets it back, needs some help. Timeout called by his dad. He got help from his dad. Right there, his dad they rushed did. in and saved him. Of course, that's Shane Hawkins, and we have a timeout on the floor. It's going to be a full. It comes at the 125 mark. Carterville's up 10, 64-54. We'll come back for the conclusion of this basketball game next on News Radio WJPF.
Okay. Slides broadcast is brought to you by Home Renew, serving all of Southern Illinois. Call 694-9100. Call Home Renew, and we'll have our Home Renew postgame report coming up at the conclusion of this game. Lions basketball, 10-point lead, minute 20 remaining. A chance to close this out. Will they run the clock? They'll try. The pass down into the paint, tipped away. Turnover on the Lions. They don't run the clock. Ill-advised pass, turnover. On Carnival, gives it back. A long three. Top of the key is buried by Jaden Smith. And now it's a seven-point game. Carson Pearson steps through the double team, gets the ball to Connor Hawkins, who was cutting toward the bucket. 20 for Connor, back to nine. 47 seconds remaining. Indians in the front court. Dasani Edwards, shot, no good. Rebound, Caden Hawkins, good job on the boards. Outlet pass, Carson Pearson. Had a chance to take it to the hole, backs it up, wants to run some clock, 32 seconds. Triple team into Downen. He dribbles out, double team on Downen. His pass up top to Connor Hawkins. Carterville's gonna win this game. 66-57, the, the score with 20 seconds remaining. And a whistle and a foul. Well, I'm going to tell you two of my nominees for star of the game for Carterville. Connor Pearson and Nick Laird. They both gave some offense that you normally don't see from them in this game tonight. And we've talked about Carson Pearson and his defense all year. He What a great pass to Connor Hawkins on that last bucket. But I think Pearson and Laird have done a very good job giving – a lift to this offense tonight. Connor Hawkins hits the first free throw. The foul was called on Jaden Smith. Connor has 22 points in the game as he hits the second free throw. He's going to come out of the game. He is the leading scorer for the Carterville Lions. Massac County beats Murfreesboro 45-39. Indians fire three. Air ball up top is going to give the ball back to the Lions. 68-57, an 11-point lead for Coach Shake Hawkins and the Lions. Carnival is going to win another hard-fought game against Duke Coin. They're all like this, aren't they? Yeah. Nick Laird breaks the press, gets into the front court. Carterville can hold. That's going to be your final. 68-57. Carterville picks up the win. Carterville now 11-11, 3-3 in conference. Stay tuned. Your home or new postgame show is next on News Radio WJPF. Sixty-eight fifty-seven. Sixty-eight fifty-seven. The Carterville Lions even their overall record at eleven and eleven. They're three and three in conference. And uh, after the sixty-eight fifty-seven win here at Carterville, so Carterville sweeps the two games in conference with Ducoin. The first game 
was a nine-point game, 54-45 back in December. And tonight, the 11-point win, 68-57. And uh, good ball game by the Carterville Lions. Well, a good game overall. They had a couple of spurts late in the uh, second quarter, late in the, uh, in the game where things start to unravel a little bit. But overall, a very good game. And it all starts with Carterville shooting from the field. Carterville shot 57% from the field tonight. Connor Hawkins unconscious yet again from beyond the three. 49% for Duke Coyne, which is a very good shooting from the field. Carterville in the second half, 6 of 7 from the free throw line. Duke Coyne only 2 of 7. That helped keep Duke Coyne uh, at bay as well. Carterville out-rebounded the... Uh, two, three. Let's see, that is, let me figure this out here real quick. Need some additional fingers here? Carnival out-rebounded <laughs> going 26 to 15. Carnival led in rebounding by Downen with eight. Leading the Ducoin Indians was, was Green with four. Ducoin 15 turnovers. Carnival 18 turnovers, a few too many. But it didn't cost him the game tonight as Carnival wins 68-57. Looking at the scoring, Ducoin was led by Caden Mays. What a ball game by Mays. He winds up with 25. He was really their entire offense tonight. Well, he had to be because Carnival did such a good job on Purcell. Yeah. Not letting it. Somebody else had to step up. Mays did. It just wasn't enough. And Purcell winds up with 12 in the game. Carnival did an outstanding job. First matchup of the year, he had 19. He winds up with a dozen tonight. Well, you know, he scored 12 tonight, but it almost seemed like he only scored like six or seven. He was just frustrated all night long, uh, but he's a good enough player. He's probably going to score double digits every night, but Carnival did a very, very good job on him tonight. Uh, other scoring uh, for the Indians, Jaden Smith was six. Dasani Edward was six. Uh, Wade uh, Robertson with four, and Trajan Smith with uh, four. Ducoin. Had 57 points tonight. What an effort, though, from Caden Mays. When you look at the scoring for the Carterville Lions, how about Connor Hawkins? His importance to this team since the El Dorado, maybe a little bit before the El Dorado Holiday Tournament, outstanding. 22 points. He comes out, hits his first five three-pointers. He winds up with, uh, or he hits his first four. He winds up with five in the game, 22 points to lead the Lions. And it all started in Anna Jonesville this year. This is a dimension that Carterville's basketball team has not had in my four years since I've been in Carterville. They haven't had that consistent outside shooter that will just make teams have to go to a man-to-man -man even though they don't want to. Connor Hawkins is just, well, as we've said many times, he's just unconscious. He is. He leads the Lions with 22 tonight. Good scoring from the Lions up and down the lineup. Carson Pearson with 10. You had uh, Nick Laird, who had an important 10 points tonight. Eli Downen, a quiet 14. I mean, he a couple of stretches where he got what the Lions needed. You have Bryce Anderson, who added 7. Caden Hawkins with 2. Austin Garby with 2. Preston Sumner with 1. And Carterville, 68 points tonight. You don't see the Lions score 68 in a game very often. No, and they also had four players to double figures, which is very, very good because that means not one or two guys are having to carry this team. Yeah, Connor Hawkins went off tonight, but they still got contributions from guys like Pearson and Laird uh, tonight, which I thought was very, very big. We'll continue our Homer Noon postgame show. Stay tuned when we return. Scott and I will name our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game, 68-57. Lions get the win tonight here on News Radio WJPF. <clears throat> I'm good going with the co. Huh? I'm good going with the co. How about a how about a how about a hat trick? Connor Hawkins, you, you, you gotta can't, throw him in there. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. 
68-57, the final score. The Lions even their uh, record at 11 and 11, three and three in conference. Only eight games left in the season. Scott heads in tomorrow night. We go to Benton. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a tough game tomorrow night at uh, Benton. But uh, Carterville with a big win, conference win here tonight at DuCoin. Let's name our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal Star of the Game. Well, we talked Stars. about it, and uh, I'll use uh, I use a hockey term. We're going to go with a hat trick tonight. You can't, you can't discount what Connor Hawkins has done since the end of Jonesboro game, what he did here tonight, hitting his first five threes. But I also thought Carson Pearson and Nicholas Laird getting double-digit in points, something that you normally don't see from those two, helping out offensively. I think you've got to recognize those three, those three players as our stars of the game. Carson Pearson, Nicholas Laird, Connor Hawkins, Rain or Shine, Sleet or Snow, call Joe. Call 534-8148, owned by Joe and Lindsey McCann of Carterville for over 20 years. They specialize in residential and uh, commercial lawn care, landscaping maintenance, tree trimming, snow removal, um, rain or shine, sweet or snow. 534-8148, call Joe, Carson Pearson, Nick Laird, and Connor Hawkins, our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game. Uh, Coach Shane Hawkins here. Conference game. Conference win, conference battle, bruiser. What? How, how else can we describe this? Conference road game. <laughs> I may be off. There you go. Now turn it up. I had it on the first time. There you go. We got there you. We, I still haven't figured this out after four years. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a conference road game, and they're not – whatever conference you play, whatever level you play, conference games are, are really hard to win uh, because the level of scouting and, and, and you've we've played these guys – twice a year since our seniors were freshmen. So they've played eight times or nine times or whatever it's been. So when you play people that many times, you get to know people. You get to know their tendencies. You get to know how they play and, and, and what makes them tick. And um, you know, I, thought we did, I thought we did a very good job early. I thought the first half was very good, minus the last 50 seconds. Yep. Uh, it was 12. Uh, it got chaotic. The, one of the last possessions with right out 50 seconds in the half. It got chaotic. There was, we drove baseline, we kicked it out towards the half line, we saved it, and then we kicked it and we had a three. But when you're playing in chaos, much like the last seven or eight minutes, when you're playing, it, it's hard to make shots. It's hard to, to be balanced and have uh, your footwork right and be prepared to shoot it when it's just constant chaos all the time. And uh, we shot an air ball that led to a breakout. Uh, we turned it over. It led to another basket. Uh, and then we didn't execute the last second or two seconds of the, uh, of the half, and we turned it over again. Uh, but I thought for the first 15 minutes and 10 seconds, I thought we were really, really good. I thought we were good offensively. Penetration hurt us a little bit tonight, or a lot again tonight. Um, but I thought, we, I thought we did a lot of the right things uh, I think we're, there's no question we're still getting better. Uh, I think we were better tonight. I think this was on par to how we played last week. Uh, we just found a way to win it at the end. Coach, I don't know if this was your game plan coming in or not, but I thought you did a very good job of not letting Purcell beat you tonight. He got 12 points, but at the end of the game, it didn't seem like he had 12. He, you just did a very good job on him tonight. I, I, thought, it was a, I thought it was a team effort. and uh, Again, we've seen him play so many times, and we know, we know what he's going to do. We know where he likes to catch it. We know, we know what he wants to do off his moves. I thought we, we had bodies to him. We didn't let him catch it on the block in ISO situations and hang and hang and bounce and bounce and bounce and spin. And, you, and you, he's, he's got really good footwork. He's very quick, obviously very strong and a very good athlete. So we kind of made him make moves faster than maybe he wanted to, got help to him, made him kick it out a couple times. Um, you can't let, can't let their best player beat you and I thought we did a, a, a very good job uh, of not letting him catch it on a block and wheel and deal and, and go have his way with us. Conference wins a conference win coach but let's look at tomorrow night we get to hit the road. Benton uh, let's see here I don't know if I can give you an update um, real quick 
I can't, but um, it's, a, it, it's a one point game, Heron and Benton. What do you know about Benton going into tomorrow night? Uh, you know, I, I know they're having a very good year. I, I know they, they spread you, they play a lot off the bounce. Uh, much like these guys, they're going to spread you. The, the only difference is they shoot it from the perimeter way better. Uh, Reese Johnson will be uh, maybe as good as point guards we've, we've seen all year. He is really good. I take that back. He falls in right below the guys from Collinsville because uh, Smith and, and Rayshon are, are really, really good. Yeah. He's not to that level, uh, but he's very good. Uh, handles it very well. He's got a great first step. Uh, he's got good strength. Um, shoots it well from the arc. He, he'll be a handful. We'll have to control him or at least contain him a little bit uh, tomorrow night. If he gets in the gaps um, and can get to 15 feet, he's go- it was going to be a long night for us. And um, you know, we'll, we'll take this one. We'll work on the Rangers tomorrow. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big game for us. It's not a conference game, but uh, you know, we have sectional or subsectional seating here in a week and a half. You go on the road against you know, maybe, a, maybe the top seat. Uh, they've won at Massac. Uh, they could be a one, two, or a three seed. You go win one on the road. Now that kind of changes some, some things around a little bit. So uh, that will be the. We talk with our guys. Every game means something. You got to figure out what that game means. Obviously tonight, a conference road game. Tomorrow night it has seating implications for sectional. So um, we'll enjoy this one. We'll get out of here. Uh, come back tomorrow and get ready for the Rangers. 68-57. The final score. Carterville gets the win on the road at Ducoin tonight. Congratulations, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you. Shane Hawkins is joining us here on our postgame show. When we come back, we'll put a wrap on this broadcast get you set for tomorrow night. This is Lions Basketball on News Radio. Heron beats Benton tonight, Coach, 48-45. We'll get you wrapped up here on this broadcast on News Radio WJPF. the final score. Scott Hudson, we're going to Rich Heron Gymnasium tomorrow night. And they're not going to be happy campers after losing tonight at Heron in a conference game. But, you know, that was their big game of the weekend. Now, do they come in tomorrow night? Maybe their shoulders, uh, you know, shrugging a little bit. Maybe they don't, maybe they look at Carnival's record and think they can just show up. Carnival with a nice win tonight. They've got the momentum going in tomorrow night. Won't be easy, as Coach Hawkins said. But like he said, this game tomorrow night's all about seedings. 6.30 will be our broadcast, 7.45, the tip-off. 68.57, the Lions get the win at DuCoin. For our producer-engineer back in studio, Brian R. Powell, for my broadcast partner, Scott Hudson, I'm Dave McKenzie. Thank you for tuning in and listening to Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. God bless, everybody. Thanks, bud.